Now for my presentation, I'm going to be talking about many things, but there are two things that I want, I want you guys to take away. Two key things. So the, re the first one is around reflection. So reflection is that we are not the same industry that we were 10 years ago. We are quite different. Direction is we need to keep working hard at, um, at making sure that we stay above all our, all our competitors. So we need, a, we need to keep on adopting some of these new regulations that are coming through and exceeding almost where we've been. So reflections, we're not the same industry and directions, we need to keep on working hard at what we're doing. So, I don't know, oh, I don't know if you guys have stopped to think who, who your customer looks like. So, these are for the major velvet producers in the room here, but who does your customer look like? What is the most typical customer? And for the first time, we're actually able to put a face to the person most likely to buy your velvet. Um, this was huge thanks to, M, uh, to Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, for their su support around some market research that we did in, um, did in April. So the person most likely to buy your velvet is a Korean businesswoman aged between about 30 to 50. She'll be going out and buying uh, velvet for herself to consume, for her kids to consume, and for her husband to consume. She is the main purchase decision maker of what you produce here in New Zealand. And you know, when she's out on a busy day shopping for a bit of velvet, she's also now got the ability to sit down at a trendy cafe somewhere in Seoul and have a nice velvet tea, energy given tea. So it's a pretty cool dynamic area. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about who is consuming the velvet that you're producing. So this is quite important for us to understand when we go about our day to day um, activities. So a typical velvet, uh, a typical consumer has got a level of elegant and sophistication, a far cry from the way our old markets were. <laughs> so I was really excited when I saw this, uh, this final segment. Well, sorry, when I looked at the whole conference. In fact, JT, I think you um, came, kind of came up with some of the ideas around reflection and direction. I thought this is going to be super cool. And then I noticed we're at this little end bar called the um, making it stick. So I think us in the velvet sector, we've, uh, we've got the sticky end of the, of the um, conference. So that's, but that's cool, because we've been growing as an industry and we need to make that stick. We need to keep um, pushing ourselves. So as I've mentioned, the key reflection is we're not the same industry. And I must acknowledge right now that a huge thanks goes to Korean Ginseng Corp. And I've been up here many times saying their names, but it's the investment that they put in that's helped us mature and help us take a sophisticated product to this new market. So where once we would have sold, you know, some 10 years ago, we would have sold into the Jackie Dong market, where 85% of New Zealand's velvet um, ended up, or to Wing Jiao, which is where most of the jelly tip ends up in, in uh, China, just south of Hangzhou, uh, to Guangzhou, um, the TCM type markets, and Hughes around here somewhere, but um, there are a lot of, lots of co-products and what have you that end up there, or some of the Taipei retail stores. But one fact that you guys will notice as you're sitting in here looking at the slide, you'll see that there's real little chance for product differentiation when you compare with the sophisticated and elegant type of markets um, that we're now represented in. So it's pretty cool. Innovation, it's all changing and our industry has really changed. And so when I match them up and I, and I have a look at um, our old type of markets in red and our new type of markets in blue, I see with the TCM and I kind of go through what does this really mean for us, the chance to promote New Zealandness to consumers um, under TCM wholesalers was pretty limited, as, as you've just seen from that slide. But the chance to promote the New Zealandness with the healthy food ch um, channels has been celebrated. They've used that as a point of difference. So they've taken that New Zealand story and they've kind of pumped it through. And that's um, led to quite, um, quite exciting developments because it's led to a real growth in that um, consumption. Price motivators, there are some commodity traders in the market that make their money out of instability. We all know that. They're looking to buy off you at a cheaper price and then sell it at a more expensive price. And I know when I'm dealing with all of these major big food corporations, they want stability. That's exactly what you guys are after when I have my individual conversations with you as well. So that's also a change. That's also a good thing, obviously. If we track, and you're going to see a graph um, in my next uh, slide, 
that, that I've shown many, many times before because it showed the, the sad state of our industry up until about 10 years ago. But velvet was generally, velvet consumption was generally declining as we were operating only in that, um, only in that traditional Chinese medicine sector. But looking at the Korean import stats into that food sector, we know that velvet consumption over the last three years has had almost a double digit growth in consumption. And what we would have thought would have been quite a mature market. So that's really cool. Consumers, you've just seen, they're a different audience. Um, and that's really neat. But nothing's for free. So the product expectation of our more sophisticated type of consumer is a lot higher than where we sold Velvet before. So that was that direction side. We need to make sure we keep on pushing ahead.